Hey, I'm Doug McAllister, and welcome to Stories I Didn't Tell Last Sunday. This is the weekly podcast from Journey Fellowship Church, and we are excited that you joined us today. This is episode 20, I think 23, and man, we are just thrilled that you have found us, and we are looking forward to a conversation today that we're going to have with Mike Sanders. That's right. Mike is a chef. Uh, he has his own YouTube channel. Also, you're a photographer. You do all kind of stuff, Mike. So I invited Mike today because we're going to talk about food. You know, uh, there was a, a best-selling book a few years ago called The Five Love Languages. You may have heard of it. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. think there should be a sixth uh, because my love language is food. Oh, amen. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> we live in South Louisiana, some of the best food in the whole world. And you hear it all the time. Yeah, and I've had the opportunity to travel the whole world, and, yeah. and I have never had food like we have in South Louisiana. I heard somebody say the other day that uh, when Hurricane Ida came through they uh, on the news, they asked, why would people in Louisiana live knowing that hurricanes are coming? And the guy answered them, why would people live anywhere else where they know they're going to get bad food every day? Because in Louisiana, you never have a bad meal. Man, let me tell you how long they've been talking about yeah. Louisiana food. Yeah. If you ever watch Andy Griffith. I love or, Andy Griffith. Or yeah. not Andy Griffith. I'm sorry. No? I was talking about Daniel Boone. Oh, my gosh. You went way back. Okay. We're yeah. talking Daniel Boone. Yeah. And they're talking. I'm going to New Orleans. Yeah. Because, man, I love the food there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. They <laughs> back in the 50s. Huh? And I know. That's a long still time ago. Still talking about it. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about a couple of things, Mike. I, I know you guys, you and Pam, have uh, your YouTube channel. Tell us what your channel's called and how people can find you on YouTube. You know, we called our channel the Sanders Kitchen because we are the Sanders. Yeah. And we cook in our kitchen. Yeah. And you said, well, that's a <laughs> very makes so, great makes name, Makes a lot man. of sense. Yeah. So the Sanders Kitchen is on YouTube. And you started, what, about a year ago? Actually, we did start exactly a year ago, exactly this month. Exactly a year ago. Wow. And a year ago, we had no subscribers. Wow, zero. And we... <laughs> Only one way to go up from zero. You know, Well, I think we started off with two subscribers, yeah. Pam and I. Well, there you go. <laughs> and now where are you? We have 1,357 subscribers. Congratulations, as Mike. As of today. And, Man. Uh, and it, what's really interesting is that we are now monetized. Yeah. Wow. So we have... You're uh, making the big bucks with YouTube, I'm huh? telling you. And I looked at my projected view, Yeah. and um, I'm eligible for a point zero one, whatever that is. That uh, sounds amazing. I mean, hey, I, <laughs> I might retire. <laughs> hey, man, they're paying you to cook now, bro. Yeah, well, I'm so proud of you, man. If, uh, you, if you love food and love to cook, subscribe to the Sanders Kitchen because Mike um, puts on some great... Recipes and I like how you give step by step instructions, starting with prep, uh, all the way to the finished product. I think know. that's part of the deal, you yeah. know, to let people know. And you know, it's interesting. We met this young lady at the grocery the other day, I, and you know who we're. You know, I don't want to mention yeah. her name. She's right. a sweetheart. Yeah. But she said, "I've tried to do a couple of your recipes, and yeah. it, it just didn't work out for me. Yeah, you know, I couldn't." And I'm like, "Well, okay, I get that because I've yeah. had that happen to me too." Yeah. You know? Well, I'm not a good uh, cook either, so I understand that. Yeah. I do watch. I do enjoy watching people who know how to cook. Oh, yeah. Cook, because then you kind of get the flow of how it's supposed to look and what's supposed to happen. Yeah, and, you know, you really do want to try to to educate people. And, yeah. And, because sometimes those little things, you know, like, uh, do we do this first and, and then that second? Or do, you know, uh, yeah. uh, or is it better if you do it the other way? Yeah, uh, and, and it's important, you know, sometimes you don't realize – why one step is ahead of the other? Well, there's a reason why. That's you know? right. And most of us who are not skilled at cooking, yeah, throw it all together. Now, there's there's a science to this if you do it right. Yeah. You know, you it's gotta, a, And, you know, I did learn that a long time ago. Yeah. You, there's a science to it. Yeah. And, and it's just like in photography. Photography yeah. is an art and a science. And, yeah. of course, you know, we, yeah. we're we photographers. Exactly, for years now. 32 years. Yeah. And... Uh, and so what I learned many years ago is once you learn the science, yeah. then you can become the artist. Yeah, it, that's beautiful, man. You know, you I can't like be you can't just be an artist yeah. without understanding the science cuz yeah. you know, the exposure and all that. Yeah, so of all the meals you've already made in the last 12 months, which one has the most views on your YouTube channel? Do you Believe know? it or not, it's yeah. 
Uh, it's a melatonin dish. Really? Yeah. So tell us, what is a melatonin? A melatonin is uh, is a popular. It's a squash. Okay, it's squash. And uh, and around the country, they're called coyote squash. Yeah. Uh, here in in the South, we call it melaton. Yeah, I like how Cajun people say it or Southern melaton. Yeah. Melaton. Yeah, we kind of give yeah. it our own little. Yeah, and it has an aura twist. like mer, yeah. merlaton. It you looks know? like it. You spell merlaton, but nobody, but nobody kinda, says yeah, melaton. No, it's melaton. They let the R out completely. Right. So uh, this squash is your most viewed. And do you stuff it or what's special about? There's the so way many you do things it? you can do with it. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that that we enjoy the most yeah. is uh, uh, like a squash of melaton casserole, yeah. uh, shrimp and melaton soup. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Now, when it comes to soup, I yeah. love that soup. Yeah, uh, that's another video that we made that's that's doing good. Which one? Um, shrimp and melaton soup. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. Uh, but I have to admit, though, the red beans and rice. <laughs> When I made red beans and rice, boom, that thing took Man, off. That is a, that's a Everybody classic Everybody wants Louisiana to know how to dish. make good red beans yeah, and rice. Yeah, and you know, I don't know, is there anything better than Louisiana red beans? When they're but, done uh, right, slow cooked all day, it's just... But, you know, I want to get back to that melatonin because I just want to tell you something interesting. Go ahead. You take that melatonin and cut it right in half. Right. And you boil it. And it might take 45 minutes to get yeah. that thing soft. Yeah. Because you're going to scoop the flesh out. But yeah. you know what's in the middle of a melaton? No idea. A seed. Really? And the seed tastes like an artichoke heart. Really? Now, how many people love artichoke hearts? Man. So we take all the seeds out yeah, yeah. after they've been boiled. Are they big or small? Oh, they're they're thin. Yeah. But they're probably maybe about a walnut size. Oh, wow. Well, as far as not round. But size. Just long. And flat. But it's kind of flat. Yeah. And uh, it, it's soft and... It's it tastes just like an artichoke. How heart. many seeds are inside? Of just one seed. Just one. But you can take that seed once it's boiled yeah. and soft, and put oil and vinegar and yeah. a little salt and pepper. And I'm yeah. telling you, throw that thing in a salad. Do not throw that away. That sounds amazing. <laughs> you can eat yeah. every part of that right. thing. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. But that squash. that video has over nine thousand views. Oh my word. And I know as soon this year, as soon yeah. as melatons hit the grocery, yeah, it's just gonna yeah. it's gonna blow. Yeah. That's going to be a good uh, But it's really cool to see dish. commercials on all your videos. Yeah. That's nice, huh? Get it, you being it, monetized, I can't man. believe it's really happening yeah. for us. So you are, you're opening your second career. You're, you're retiring from photography or kind of winding down, but you may be opening up a whole new career, huh? Uh, well, I think I have. Yeah. That's exciting, man. I First time I remember have. seeing you, Mike, was on Channel 4. Mm-hmm. Years ago, you were... You were like a guest hosting or co-hosting with uh, Frank Davis. Yeah. So you were friends with Frank, apparently. Uh, I became yeah. friends with Frank. Right. How'd you meet Frank? Yeah. Frank called us one day. We had a big studio. Yeah. Uh, 3,500 square foot studio. We were blowing and going. Yeah. We had so many appointments. You couldn't yeah. hardly get in wow. for two weeks yeah. at a time. Anyway, Frank called and he said, I need promo shots yeah. and I need them right away. Wow. And I hated to turn Frank down. Yeah, uh, I didn't know him, but I, I hated to turn him down. So I told uh, my wife, who's making the appointment, I said, look, tell him that if he wants to, I'll meet him here at 8 o'clock. Wow. That'll give me time to finish up my last session, mm-hmm. go home, get something to eat, clean yeah. up, and yeah. I'll come back to work. Yeah. And he said, perfect. Yeah. So we, we booked the session for like a Friday mm-hmm. night or something like that. Right. And... And uh, we didn't get out of here until about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Right. We yeah. did that. But after that, that promo happened, for his uh, his show? No. Well, you know, he, he did a lot of book signing. Oh, right. But in addition to book signing, he would just give away pictures of him fishing. I see. Got it. Um, yeah. You know, cooking. Yeah. And I mean, basically all we did was uh, chef jacket shots. Yeah. And then we had one with his fishing clothes on and, yeah. and a little rod and reel. Yeah, I, I, I remember seeing those. So you and, took uh, those then. I did, yeah. Wow. And they were, and would, believe it or not, it was, you know, we did take them in color, but yeah. he had to print them, we'd print them in black and white. Right. Print. How many years was uh, Frank on WWE? Oh, he, it know? was over 30. Yeah, because he was just like a legend here in New Orleans. Oh, man. yeah. Well, yeah. Frank not only did cooking, but yeah. he did a fishing report. And right. They called it the fishing game. Fishing game. I used to watch it all the time. And, you know, I asked I asked him, what happened to the game? Yeah. <laughs> it, you know, he, he, he went out just to the fish. He says, well, what happened was we uh, we would say, well, we're out here and, uh, and the uh, 
you know, X, Y, Z Bayou yeah. over here in Delacro. Yeah. And we just got through nailing, yeah. you know, some ducks, blah, yeah. blah, blah. He yeah. said in the following weekend, there'd yeah. be 500 people yeah. out there. Everybody's hunting duck. Yeah. And he's, that's what happened. Yeah. They, they, yeah. they had to get rid of the game. So 35 years he was on WWL cooking and doing the fishing game report. And you guys. And then he that. did Naturally Nolan's. Oh, that's so he true. did three things. That's right, man. I used to love that too, man. He was and, interesting. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, and I gave him a couple of ideas for that, you? too. Oh, you yeah. should have seen. Didn't they name the uh, the Five Mile Bridge after Frank? They did. Yeah, because I remember seeing the, the other day there was a the Naturally New Orleans Bridge. Yeah, Frank. Naturally New Orleans. Frank Davis, Naturally New Orleans yeah. Bridge. Yeah, what that, an honor. That's pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, we lost Frank a few years ago, huh? He passed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and... When and did Frank was, die? When did Frank die? When, um, hmm. I think it's been probably about five years it's ago. been that long, man. Yeah, so you used to go on his cooking show because I remember seeing you, and he had a special name for you, didn't he? What did he call you? Oh, he called me Little Chef. Yeah, Little Chef. Yeah, yeah that's, that's because really about that time, Ratatouille, the movie yeah. Ratatouille, <laughs> the little rat, and he little chef, you Little Chef. Called yeah. me Little Chef. What would you cook with Frank? Uh, a lot of Cajun food, I'll tell you that. Did you? Uh, oh, yeah. we did. We did so much stuff. Yeah. Uh, we had we had some really good things and, and yeah. a couple of not so. Did you learn anything from? Frank? Oh, I learned a lot, a yeah, ton like of stuff. Give us an example. Uh, what did Frank teach you? Well, you know, um, like mirepoix. Yeah. You ever heard of mirepoix? I had no idea what that is. <laughs> that is when that is what you call onions, uh, bell pepper, yeah. celery. And uh, and now Frank had five things that he loved to cook yeah, with, right? And most everything he had had onions, bell pepper, celery, parsley, and garlic. Is that the same thing as the Trinity that people talk about in you Louisiana know the cooking? Northern Trinity yeah. is onions, uh, carrots, yeah, and and something else, and I can't remember what. Yeah, the, uh, maybe celery. Or, yeah, uh, but the in the South, our Trinity is like uh, always onion. Yeah. Uh, bell pepper and celery. Right, those are the three things. Are those the main ingredients for the roux or for the gravy or for? Oh, the those meat are those what? ingredients go in so many foods. You Everything. Wouldn't That's why they call the Trinity that everywhere. Sometimes yeah. Frank wouldn't use bell pepper. Yeah, just depending on the dish. Uh, yeah, they they were basically, believe it or not, they were kind of Italian folks. You know, I mean, yeah. they were Sicilian, mm -hmm. and so a lot right. of things they cooked at home had red yeah. gravy. Yeah, uh, but he loved his brown gravy, yeah. rice. Yeah. But I'll tell you, one of the things that, that he cooked that almost freaked me out a little bit because I never had it was turkey necks. Yeah. But I love turkey necks. Well, it's kind of hard to look at. When you cook it, I was like, oh, that just doesn't look delicious, but they are. They are. And when yeah. that meat's falling off the mode tender. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So Frank, we just cook it. And you know, in Louisiana, we cook some of the strangest food. I mean, I wonder who the first guy who thought of cooking a crawfish. I mean, just to see him in the in the in the swamp. I wish I had an answer for that. I I, I do not. <laughs> Who was but that, that is guy? A crazy. Well, you know, I, I've re I've read a little bit about Cajun cuisine, and a lot of the dishes originated from uh, the Cajuns who were just making a living off the land. They had to eat whatever was available. Right. You know, so they took the crawfish and all the seafood, and you know, the bell pepper and uh, onions and. A celery and just turned it into the most amazing food ever you know you know it was a lot of fun on the show at, yeah. at the end of the show what people didn't see yeah was after all that food was cooked yeah the the people at the station took a break because yeah. then after nine o'clock that yeah. show was over yeah and they lined up everybody ate and mean it was gone <laughs> gumbo if That's it was great. if it was a gumbo or a stew yeah uh i'm telling you it, it they they yeah. scraped the bottom of the dish. Was Frank a Cajun chef or just Louisiana in general? Uh, I, I really want to say just Louisiana in general. Yeah. And he cooked so many things. Right. It, I mean, his, if you look at his cookbook, as a matter of fact, we're getting ready to do a recipe today. Really? A Frank Davis recipe no called Halftime Chicken Wings. Are you really? It's going to be on your channel? It will be. I got to watch that one, man. Yeah. 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 Um, would you consider yourself just a South Louisiana chef or... A Cajun chef. What do you, you think? You know, I, I'm going to say uh, a, a South Louisiana chef. Yeah. You know, my mother was uh, Italian. Yeah. And uh, and my dad, my dad's mother was Italian. Yeah. And his dad was a German. Yeah. And uh, 
Now, I think, but grandma, I mean, she didn't cook German food. She cooked Italian. I mean, she never did cook yeah. anything. So you have a lot of German. Italian influence. Oh, big in Italian your, influence. In your dishes. Right. Yeah. And and if you would read the history on some of the dishes, like grits and griots, yeah. and, you know, mm-hmm. tomato, did you know that a tomato uh, was not a popular thing in this area really? until the Spanish people moved in? Really? Or, or, I mean, you know, the words, when, when, other influences started coming into the right. country, right? You know, uh, uh, from different parts of the world, right? They brought their food with them, their yeah. recipes True. with them, yeah. and if they didn't have tomatoes, they'd grow them. Yeah, and you know what really is interesting too about all the people coming in from other countries, when the King of England um, um, forced the Acadians in Eastern Canada to leave the nation of Canada, they. They they took a, they took boats all the way down the Atlantic seaboard to the Gulf of Mexico, and they they landed in what is now Lafayette and the general South Louisiana mm-hmm. area. So the word Cajun comes from Acadian. It's, it's a corruption of the word Acadian from Canada. So they brought their food and their dishes with them, and just there used the produce that was available in South Louisiana, and was born now this uh, international cuisine that we call Cajun food. Right, you right. Know, and it came out of people suffering and pain, and probably everything we ever do that's worth doing is born out of our own suffering and life experiences. And then you bring in the Italians and uh, the Germans and all the influences of other, you know, immigrants right, right. coming into the nation. And man, that's why Louisiana was a melting pot. We were ruled by the Spanish. We were ruled by the French. We were ruled by the English. Yeah. We, we, you know, we were ruled uh, by lawlessness for a hundred years. So all of those things become like a, a melting pot. And now here we are in the 21st century, still eating the food of all these amazing cultures. You know, they kind of all blend it together. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's it's so it's you know it's, it's such a good. Um, it's a good place to experience a lot of different food, mm-hmm. you know. And through and through the the friendship of Frank, uh, I've had an opportunity to meet a lot of uh, really awesome chefs, like you know John Foles. Did you really? And um, uh, oh, I can't remember who's who's the lady. Uh, I don't know. Oh, Leah Chase. Okay, I had to, yeah. I had to look over there. Yeah, to get my answer. Yeah, you had to get Q from Pam. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you met some really world class chefs, huh? Yeah. Oh, uh, we met some really awesome yeah. people. Now yeah. you asked me earlier about yeah. cooking with Frank. Yeah. And and how did I become friends with him? Yeah. So I just want to elaborate on that yeah, a tell little the story. bit. So yeah. So basically, what happened was, uh, you know, because Frank needed some photography, mm-hmm. and we provided him with that. So then one day he came in. To pick up his order. Yeah. And they were casually dressed, he and Mary Claire. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I I said, uh, so what's going on today, Frank? And he says, uh, oh, I have to go get my boat mm-hmm. from the, the boat launch, he said, because I'm, I'm not using it. He said, I'm just going to sell it. Yeah. Uh, and I said, uh, okay, so where is it? He said, oh, it's down by the Wrigley's. Yeah. He's, and I said, well, if you don't mind, I'm just curious, which one is going to back the trailer down? Yeah. <laughs> and and who's the other one going to drive and, the boat around? And load the, load yeah, because I couldn't really see Mary Claire backing the trailer down yeah. you know, or driving the boat. Yeah. And uh, and he said, uh, oh, we'll figure it out Yeah. like that. And I said, look, look, I have my own boat. I mean, I'd, yeah. so why don't you just let me come help you? I'm not yeah. doing anything right now. Right. And he said, oh, no, man, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then Mary Claire stepped in and said, Frank, let him let him help you. <laughs> so Good she advice. stayed there and yeah. became friends with Pam. Oh, that's so and, wonderful. And I uh, uh, went over there and helped him get the yeah. boat out. And then on the way back, and that was a Wednesday, and I'll tell you why I remember it, because yeah. Thursday was his fishing report. Yeah. So he says, hey, man, what are you doing tomorrow? Yeah. And we're on our way back to to the studio where he could pick up Mary Claire. And I said, uh, I said, well, I probably have some appointments tomorrow afternoon, but right. I don't think I have anything in the morning. Wow, yeah. what's going on? He yeah. says, well, I'm doing my fishing report. I want you to go fishing with me. Oh, That sweet. was my first. So oh, that's really where gosh. it all began. So where did y'all go fishing in the Wrigley's? Uh, do you remember? Uh, I think we went to Shell Beach. 
Really? Yeah. What y'all fish for there? We uh, redfish trout. Yeah, caught some. Uh, we did. Yeah, we did, and uh, it was a. But I, it wasn't a really great day because it was really cold, yeah. and it was super foggy. You yeah. couldn't see. I don't know. I was scared because yeah. you cross the ship channel, you can't hear a ship coming. That's frightening. It is. Yeah. Because you couldn't see seven feet away from the boat. Oh, my word. It was that foggy. That's when you stay on the bank, man. Oh, man. <laughs> I, t- I, w- I told a guy, I said, man, look, do me a favor. Just yeah. get over to the side as yeah. quick as you can. Yeah. Because I know I'm in my own boat. I've been there. Yeah. But anyway, so That's funny. so we, we made friends with Frank yeah. and, uh, and, and Mary Claire. They came over for dinner one time. Yeah. And I had beef stew. Yeah. And he says, Mike, this is probably the best beef stew I think I ever had. Wow. I said, come on, man. Don't, don't, you know, I know yeah. you cook beef stew. He says, no, I'm serious. He said, I want to know where'd you get the recipe. Yeah. And I said, uh, I just pulled it out of my head. Yeah. He says, well, you better write that recipe down because you don't want to forget that. So he made it up. And then I started, that's what made me start thinking, you yeah. know, I need to start writing things down. Yeah. But then I admitted to him, I said, look, Frank, I have never really written a recipe. He says, well, I'll, I'll send you a format and yeah. you can just. Yeah. Erase my stuff and put your own stuff in. And he says, as a matter of fact, if you don't mind, I would like to do that on Tuesday's show. So yeah. could you write it like right away? Yeah. And I said, yeah. I said, well, if you're going to do it on Tuesday's show, can I come watch it? Yeah. And he says, better still, why don't you come help me cook it? Oh, my gosh. What a privilege. And man. I said, man, that would be awesome. Yeah. So we all went up there, and, yeah. and there was four of us standing yeah. in front of that little yeah. countertop. Right. And, uh, and then he said... Man, I, I had so much fun at the end of the show. He said, I had so much fun doing this with you guys. Yeah. Would you please come back? Wow. Come back every Tuesday. Wow. And so Pam and I said, you know, we had so much fun, too. Let's do it. Yeah. I mean, we didn't mind getting up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's early. Yeah. We had to be there for 5, yeah. get the set ready to go yeah. on air for 6. Yeah. But anyway, eventually, it was kind of, you know, we were pretty tired by the end of the day. So Pam yeah. bailed out. Yeah. And uh, well, and it wasn't just that she didn't enjoy it. She did, but the mm-hmm. we were shoulder to shoulder. And yeah. When they try to get a good tight shot of Frank, right. they right. couldn't because yeah. shoulders went a picture and all yeah. that. So yeah. Anyway, so then it got down to the three of us. Yeah. And I was regular. You, Frank, and who else? Mary Claire. Oh, Mary Claire was there. And then Mary Claire needed some knee surgery. Right. And she said, Mike, if you don't, if you're going to keep coming every Tuesday. Yeah. Then I just want to go have my knee surgery because yeah. Frank, I hated to do it because Frank needs help. Yeah. And I said, I'll be here. Yeah. So guess what? You became the co-host, huh? I was <laughs> Chef Mike. That's so great. And it was so cool to hear Eric and Sally Ann say, well, good morning. And this morning we have Frank, uh, Chef Frank Davis and Chef Mike wow. in the house. Dude, you know, and Oh, yeah, honor, it was man. so cool. You know, That's so good. But uh, I, yeah. look, I didn't know everything I know now. Yeah. It's always a learning process. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And we made some mistakes. I've made some. But, you know, Frank taught me how to take those mistakes and turn them into funny things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really part of life, isn't it, is just rolling with the punches. And let me tell you, one time Frank says, Mike, uh, when we get on the air, I'm going to ask you, you ever have a bag of brown sugar stuffed back in the pantry? And when yeah. you, you finally, you don't use brown sugar that yeah. often. When right. you pull it out, it's like a brick. It's hard. Yeah. How do you soften yeah. it? And I said, oh, man, that's easy. Yeah. That's, he said, really? How do you soften? I said, I just put it on the right under the tire of the Suburban and I roll <laughs> over it one time. And if that yeah. doesn't do it, I yeah. will back it up and hit it one more time. Yeah. He says, oh. God, that is so funny. Yeah. He said, you need to say that. Yeah. So we would so we did this little bit yeah. when we got on the air, but he's yeah. he says, look, all you all you really need to do is throw it in the microwave for yeah. 20 seconds. Yeah. And he said, and then if it's not enough, you can go for maybe another 10 or 20 yeah. seconds, but it'll soften up. And right. I said, wow, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. So what I didn't know was he went in the back, in the back of the kitchen where the microwave was, and he put the brown sugar in there because he had yeah. a bag of lumpy brown sugar. Right. Except he didn't hit the numbers right. Yeah. He put it on 20 minutes. Oh, my word. That's not And he had good. it in a Tupperware bowl. That's not going to be good. So that whole big plate turned into molten 
sugary, yeah. sweet yeah. Tupperware. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I saw that, he says, bring it out. I don't care what it looks like. Oh, yeah. You may not want to show that. Oh, yeah. He yeah. showed it. Did he really? He did. Oh, he said, this is what happens when you hit the wrong numbers on the microwave. <laughs> it was bubbling, bubbling. Oh, my God. Bubbling yeah. Tupperware. I'm telling sugar. you, the man was amazing. Yeah. yeah. He could he could just yeah. take something so bad and... And everybody would just be laughing, you know, know. They would laugh and love it. I sure it. missed the fishing game report. I missed the uh, cooking with Frank in the morning. Yeah, so yeah. He was, naturally knowledge was. He was a brilliant guy. He really was. was. Man. Like, Look, everybody has their moments, but Frank was brilliant, and I loved yeah. working with him. Yeah, what a good heart. And he I had did too. learn a lot. So yeah. The, and so thus, yeah. the Sanders Kitchen. You know, uh, speaking of work, so you were a photographer for thirty two years, and you've been in the industry, and you've watched. All of the technology mm -hmm. just raced by you. You know, I oh, bet when you yeah. started, you were still taking photos on film. Oh, yeah. And then now everything's digital. And then there's been like four or five generations of uh, photography, you know, um, revolutions. So when I. How'd you manage that? So when I started, I just want, want you to know that, yes, we were shooting color film. Yeah. I have friends that were in the business when everything was black and white. Yeah, wow. But uh, when I started, we were doing a lot of high school senior photography, and yeah. the yearbook people needed black and whites. So I would right. have to take the negative, yeah. and I had to have a dark room, right. and, uh, and we would just make hundreds and hundreds. And what of, year was this you started? In 1989. 89. Yeah, I remember as a little boy back in the 70s, my mom would schedule family photos at, I forget the name of the company now. Where were they located? Uh, we were in Hammond oh, at the okay. time. Olin Mills. Yeah. You ever heard of them? I, I thought know. it was uh, Swollen Hills. I don't know what Okay, it was. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. <laughs> One or the other, but it was an event, man. Yeah, Olin you Mills, know, right. Mom, everybody got new clothes. It was a whole day's adventure. We would go to the studio. Oh, yeah. Everybody had to have their hair combed. It was like, you know, it was a rare event to get your picture taken, you know? Oh, yeah. Just, Pam and I did the same yeah. thing, and we had four kids. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we have a combined family. Yeah. You know, I had three boys, and... And she had one, but uh, they were three, four, five, and six, yeah. you know. Yeah. And and uh, our first family portrait, we still have it. Yeah. Um, nobody matched anything. <laughs> <laughs> Plaids and stripes I and remember solids. That. And, Especially in the 70s, man. Everything I mean, was psychedelic. Hey, and everything was colorful. If you could smile for the camera, yeah. it was it was good. Well, my mom and dad, cause this is like 1970 or 71, they had five kids and I was the youngest. Mm -hmm. So that morning we all got up. My sister was already married, so she had to drive in from out of town. And you had a family photo with mom and dad and the mm -hmm. five kids. My sister was probably close to 30, and I was maybe, you know, 12 or so, or whatever. So I was, she was the oldest, I was the youngest. But mom made sure that we were all, all had our hair cut. And, you know, it, it was an event where, where now photos, we take, we take 100 <clears throat> photos sometimes a day. You know, uh, I, I read this the other day, and I, I, I guess it's true. I don't know. You know, everything you read on the Internet is definitely true. Yeah. So, my, <laughs> so I read this on the Internet. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, right. But they say that uh, this year, Americans will take as many photos this year as we took in the first hundred years of photography. Oh, absolutely. We would take as many in one year. So the hundreds of millions, and that's just selfies. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, just selfies, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There was a day when, you know, you didn't waste film. I mean, you had 12 shots, man, or 16 or whatever it was, and you're not going to waste it, you know. You're going to wait. Yeah, I'm not taking a picture of that. I'm taking a picture of that. Because, you know, you got so many opportunities then you're out of film yeah, you know? yeah uh you know back then if you took a photo it was you and something famous happening or something big now yeah. it's this is how this is this is my breakfast you know <laughs> this is my lunch we take photos of you know what's funny everything what's funny in relation to food there was a cartoon i saw recently and the waitress came out and said is there something wrong with your food yeah because you hadn't photographed it yet <laughs> That's so true. This is yeah. what this is what's for lunch. Yeah, yeah. look, I'll yeah. order the such and such. It comes out and yeah, yeah, and taking pictures. Yeah, of the and food. that happens every time. You know, especially if we get out of town guests who come into our church. You know, we take them out to eat afterwards. Yeah, almost without fail, they take a photo oh, and yeah. send it back to their spouse or their friend. Hey, they've never seen crawfish at Fake. Click. You know, can I tell you it a funny story? Posted on Instagram. You know, so so. Uh, 
back in uh, like 1994 or, or 95, we, we had just opened the big Visions Photography Studio mm-hmm. on Front mm-hmm. Street. And, uh, and we had a grand opening. Yeah. Uh, we had invited a lot of people from the town, you know, yeah. uh, uh, mayor and... Yeah. Oh God, we had so many, and the the lab that we use, and we still use them. They're yeah. in Kansas City, Missouri, right? And uh, and so they had people that came down, and the guy that actually helped me design that place yeah. lived in Carlsbad, California. Oh, he wow. was there wow. as well. Yeah. So we had lab people, um, you know, the Jerry from California, and I don't know, it was about five or six of us. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to treat them to a special dinner, so I took them to a seafood restaurant. Right. Well, Jerry from California, okay? Yeah. So Jerry says, Mike, I have no idea what to order. Yeah. <laughs> just, just order me something yeah. really good that yeah. you know I would like. Yeah. And he says, but I just want a sandwich. Yeah. Well, I, we ordered him a soft shell crab. Pull boy? Pull boy. Oh, heck yeah. Well, when he saw that thing yeah. with the legs hanging the off of the... He's like... <laughs> I'm not eating that. Can't do it. He said, I'm sorry. Dude, I can't he eat missed it. A Can treat. I just have a ham sandwich, please? <laughs> he passed up soft shell crabs. He oh passed up a soft gosh. shell crab. Pull they do boy. look horrible in the in the pull boy. Yeah. Yeah. It, if you grow up looking at that, it's like that looks normal, but it's like that looks like a sea spider, you know? Well, what you know, <laughs> speaking of spiders, we just did a video on on fried shrimp yeah. and fried spiders. Yeah, really. Yeah, have yeah. you ever fried a spider? No, but I've, we've eaten them before. We we ate fried scorpions, fried spiders, and fried was it uh, grasshoppers in China? Okay, now these aren't real spiders. Oh, they're not real. What are no, they? No, it's where you take the shrimp head, you stick your finger in it, and yeah. pull the body out. Right, and it's got the legs on it. Oh yeah, and you clean that. It off. just looks like spider. It oh. looks like a well, spider. We ate the real thing. Yeah. No, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't do it again. Yeah. Yeah. No, but we call them fried spiders because it's got yeah. the legs. Yeah, right. But, uh, well, you know, there's so many interesting things to eat and then take pictures of, you know. So if you're new in Louisiana, every dish is picture worthy, yeah. you know, because we have digital cameras. You know, I was thinking about uh, the first time my mom gave me a camera, and it was a treat because, you know, it, taking pictures was so rare. And she said, be careful how many you take because we got to – Send them off and get them right, developed. That's right. So there was a time when you took pictures, mailed them off for two weeks, and they came back, you know, to the drugstore or wherever. Right. You know, and then you finally get to see your pictures after two weeks. That's right. And you go through them, and half of them were of your thumb or it, the bad lighting. <laughs> you, know, you got one good one, and it wasn't even your family. It was a stranger walking by, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it's just it's crazy how much technology And, you know, let changed. me tell you, people always ask me, and I've, it happens still today, what would you rather, film or digital? Yeah. And I, I have to admit, I'd, I'd rather the digital. Yeah. Well, me it's too. It's by far yeah. the best. Because, you know, your, your picture-taking skill as an amateur like I am goes way up with digital. You know, if you had to actually light every picture like you have to as a photographer. You know, lighting and all that, that's a whole different thing. But, look, yeah. we're, we're in the French Quarter, and yeah. we're right in front of the St. Louis Cathedral. Yeah. And I have this big wedding party, and I'm photographing them. And there's this guy digging in the garbage can. There you go. Yeah. And... And uh, and we're all laughing about it, and uh, and one of the big bulky groomsmen says, uh, "You want me to get rid of him for you?" And I said, "He's not even there. Yeah, he's yeah. not even there." He right. says, "What do you mean?" I yeah. said, "When I get back at that studio, yeah. we edit him out. I, yeah, he's yeah. just going to become a yeah. another tree. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, oh, I never thought of that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, no, so no d- big deal. So you span the uh, you span the generations from. A film to to digital, and you're still you're still taking pictures. Oh yeah, I know you're oh, still yeah. involved with school. You know what's so interesting yeah. is that uh, all my digital cameras now all do video, and yeah. I've never done a video. Really? All the years that I've yeah. had cameras yeah. that did video, I've yeah. never touched the video button on that wow. thing until wow. now yeah. with the Sanders Kitchen. Yeah, and look at that. So you're still involved in photography. Oh, yeah. Even in uh, Sanders' kitchen. Yeah, and actually, I think that's probably why uh, my videos, you know, if <laughs> progressed 
yeah. m- rather quickly because we people were saying, I just start off with the iPhone, you know. Yeah. But I that might. Yeah. Well, you're a photographer by trade. You had the equipment. Why not just? I know. I just wasn't happy with the yeah. with the yeah. the iPhone. Uh, yeah. I mean, the pictures were okay, yeah. but the actual video footage. Yeah. Not Some so of the good. YouTube channels that I've been watching are very poor in quality. I mean, yours is top notch, and Cade, who produces this podcast, is top notch. You know, but a lot of uh, YouTube channels they're using a phone. And sometimes they're using it in the wrong way. You know, they have it up straight up instead of a landscape, you know. Uh, but yet, people are so hungry for content, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I have a couple guys I follow in East Tennessee, you know, and they're not great photographers or even great hosts, but they have 10, 20, 30, 40,000 subscribers because we live in an age where people want to connect. And now mm-hmm. because of social media, you know, you can find out what's going on in Tennessee or in Timbuktu. You know, because of people's YouTube That's right. channels. I, you know, it was really amazing. I had uh, a couple of people, and maybe more than a couple, from other countries yeah. subscribe. Yeah. And I don't know who this one lady actually is, but she said to me, the people that I work for would love this recipe. Yeah. Because, but she said, I have to present them with a list of things that they would possibly want to eat. Yeah. And then she said, and so the Tuscan garlic chicken yeah. is one of their favorites. And it's thank big. you for that recipe. Wow. Interesting, huh? I wonder who the people are that she I'd like for. to know, I but know. I don't know that. Maybe we don't want to know. Maybe we... <laughs> <laughs> the people she works for wants to know. That's right. Yeah, that's... She is their chef. Yeah, that's really cool, man. And I thought that was pretty cool. All right, so what, as we get ready to wrap it up here, what is some of your favorite dishes that you love to cook just for your family and for friends? You know, I I'm going to go back to red beans and rice. Yeah. Gumbo. Yeah. Uh What kind of chip- sausage do you put in your red beans? Uh oh, definitely an andouille sausage. Andouille. Uh yeah. I love a I love a little smoke flavor. Yeah. How long does it take to cook red beans if you do it the Louisiana way from start to finish? Is it an all day deal? It's I can tell you exactly. Yeah. It's it's 90 minutes in the pot. Yeah. But you got to soak the beans overnight. Okay, so really, if 20, you don't soak them, it's a 20, 24 hour process basically. Then. You've got to soak your beans. Yeah, and why do you soak them? Well, they're going to absorb of, a lot of water. That's part of the science. <clears throat> yeah, you see, you're yeah. going to, uh, and and if you look at the package, it'll say you yeah. you need to use eight cups of water if you yeah. cook the beans. Yeah, you don't need eight cups if you soak them. You only yeah. need seven. Really? See. There's the science. Because they're absorbing the the water already. So you soak them all night Mm -hmm. in just plain water. That's right. And then you get up the next morning and do what? Uh, Well, you're going to saute all those onions, bell pepper, celery, parsley, garlic. You're going to saute that down. Yeah. You might even want to fry a little little bacon in it. Mm. Because let me tell you, a good smoked bacon goes a long way, some red beans. Yeah. Um, And then you you definitely want to use some ham. Yeah. If you have a ham bone, yeah. throw that thing in. If you don't, yeah. don't worry about it. So 90 minutes cooking with... But, but definitely, uh, once you saute everything down, throw your beans, throw your water, a little chicken mm-hmm. a little chicken uh, flavor. Right. And you're so, just going to simmer yeah. for 90 minutes. Okay. And you have to stir yeah. about every 10 minutes, no yeah. less, maybe no more than, yeah. you know, maybe seven minutes or so, you're yeah. going to take that thing and stir, stir it because you don't want it all. It's going to settle down. For the whole 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. Until it's, they're creamy? It's going to be creamy. Yeah. Guaranteed. And, right. you know, look, cook them early, yeah. put the lid on, yeah. and when it's done, turn the fire off. They just get creamier yeah. just from sitting right. there. You know, yeah. sometimes food's better the next day. Absolutely. Especially red beans. Do you do fried chicken with your red beans sometimes? Uh, or fried fish. Yeah. Do you do you fry fish, I mean, chicken the old-fashioned way? Uh, I like deep fried. Yeah. So, now, so, you know, mom used to fry it in a skillet. Yeah, my mom did You too. know what's interesting about that? Yeah. Mom would fry, she'd have meatballs and spaghetti and fried chicken. Yeah, really? Yeah. That is interesting. And and then she, after, after lunch, yeah. it would all get packed up, yeah. and it would sit on the stove until supper time. Wow. Didn't go to the refrigerator. You know, fried chicken is such a a, a, a southern staple. Uh, my mom cooked it at least once a week. We would fry chicken. It was like the highlight of my week when mom was frying chicken. But she'd buy the whole chicken, cut it up. And sometimes we lived out in the country, she'd kill her own chicken. Oh, yeah. That was the real fried chicken deal, man. You know, I, I watched my mom, you know, start from scratch, you know. 
uh, literally scratch, yeah, yeah. Uh, and cook a fried chicken, man. And it was wow, it was just amazing, amazing man. You that know? is amazing. Yeah, you know, and she uh, she she butchered the whole chicken and do the whole prep work. Are, are you familiar with uh, Saint Claude Street? I've been there, but I'm, I'm not too familiar with okay, it. Okay, where Franklin and St. Claude yeah. meet, mm-hmm. right about a block or so, uh, yeah. a couple of blocks in there. We had a campus at Journey. Uh, it was off St. Claude okay. on Alvar. Yeah. Well, right right on the on St. Claude was St. Rock Market. I know where it is. Now, I was a little kid, you I know, know right and, I, and I do vaguely remember going in that area because actually the barber I used to go to, yeah. Frank Frank Silva was right there. Yeah. And uh, But anyway... <laughs> My mother would go to the St. Rock Market and pick out the chicken she wanted. Yeah. They would take it in the back yeah. and come out with, wow. You know what I noticed the other day? Yeah. Uh, now, we already, we've had Kentucky Fried Chicken for years because of Colonel Sanders. Popeye's, a few years ago, rebranded their chicken, Louisiana Kitchen Chicken. Well, churches just rebranded theirs, and now they're calling it Texas chicken. Really? So we got three states worth of chicken now, Kentucky, Louisiana, and Texas. Huh. I guess because chicken is just, you know, uh, such a staple part of our diet. I can't, you know, today we're going to be doing uh, a bit, making a video called Halftime Chicken Wings. Yeah. But then tomorrow I'm going to be doing chicken piccata. Yeah. I so love some chicken now. Man, chickens won't last long in my house. I know it's the best. Well, look, as we're wrapping it up, Mike, just uh, tell everybody watching how they can find you on YouTube and uh, what some of the things they can look forward to coming. Uh, well, uh, coming up, we do have um, uh, some seasonal things. Yeah. Okay. Because, uh, you know, we're right up on, uh, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, it's Christmas. Yeah. And so we're going to be doing, I, I really want to revamp my. Yeah. Uh, turkey gravy before, yeah. yeah, you know, before the yeah. the feast. Right. Um, I do want to bake a turkey. Yeah, nice. There's some really interesting little things to yeah. know about that. Right. And you know, everybody's and doing pumpkin. Everything. You got any pumpkin recipes? We're gonna do pumpkin pie oh, yeah. with a real. Are you pumpkin. really? Oh yeah, we're gonna well, do. Miss Pam brought over a whole dish full of pumpkin uh, muffins did. this morning, so I've eaten half of one. I'll get yeah, another yeah. in a minute. Uh, so you got some pumpkin stuff coming up too. Yeah, we do. we do. We do. So it's so we're going into the seasonal stuff. Yeah, and but uh, um, but there'll be a, a you know seafood dishes yeah. coming up. You got Thanksgiving coming, Christmas coming, and then all the specialty and, items. And you know, that. look, yeah. I'm gonna tell you, they, I just talked to Pam this morning about a dish that. It, it, this is not something a seasoned chef would really want to serve. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. If you've never had taco soup, yeah, you're missing out. I've had it in Mexico, never in Louisiana. I'd be interested to try yours. It it's just it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> but it's delicious. Yeah, well, if you but need anyway, somebody to taste test, let me know. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I'll definitely bring you some. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, if if anybody do you know was. Looking for uh, my channel, it just yeah. it's simply the Sanders Kitchen on YouTube. On YouTube, and yes. we would be so blessed to, you know, have yeah. new subscribers. Yeah. So your most watched video is almost ten thousand. So you're probably approaching a hundred thousand views right now, and all all combined. Oh, you know, I, I just looked at. I, well, I, I I don't know. Yeah, I'll you're lie. right. I'll you're lie. right because this one that one's got nine thousand, yeah. and I don't know if I know yeah. how many. Yeah, how many views? Yeah, I, I haven't seen. That I was statistic. in your small group a few semesters ago. You you and Pam led a small group for. Uh, uh, a for, cooking class. Yeah, cooking class. And I joined it. I came over basically just to eat what you guys were cooking. So yeah, yeah, it was one of my favorite small groups of all times. You know, just because you, it involved my love language. Yeah. Food. Do, I, do I have an extra minute? Yeah, go ahead. I just want to say that I learned recently from a guy in Connecticut yeah. that there's a tomato. Uh, it's a plum tomato. Yeah. And it's made by a company called Alta Cucina. Yeah. And uh, and I, I did ask a local grocery store to order that for me, mm-hmm. and now they're stocking it. Really? But so what's you, it called? Alta Cucina. I've never heard of it. Plum tomato. It who's, is the, who's stocking it? That way I can... Misers, misers, so yes, over on military. Yeah, but it's okay. a big can. You yeah. know, it's a big. Yeah. So it's canned tomatoes. It's a plum tomato, uh-huh. and what makes these tomatoes so interesting yeah. or delicious is that uh, they come from Saint. Well, are you are you familiar with the island of Stan, Stanislaus? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, so you know, I may I may not totally have this right, but it's a they were growing these tomatoes. Yeah. 
in on this island where there was this volcanic ash yeah. and all that, and it just gave everything such a great wow. flavor. You use it for like uh, tomato sauce, or what do you use it for? Yes, oh, gotcha. yes, make a great marinara sauce. Nice, it is yeah. the best. I mean, yeah. I, I'm sorry, mom, I don't just put yeah. tomato sauce and paste. Yeah. And garlic, and yeah. I'm using pl- a lot of plum tomatoes yeah. from St. Stanislaus. Yeah, interesting. And uh, they're not expensive, yeah. but it's worth every penny yeah. because those plum tomatoes are so good, yeah. you can eat them right out of the can. Man. That's how delicious they are. Yeah, that sounds amazing. But if you want to make a red, what we call a red gravy, yeah. of course, that's an argument, you know. Yeah. Is it sauce or gravy? Right. Well, whatever you want to call yeah. it, I'll eat it. Yeah, just put it on some. But those tomatoes are put so it on some good. food. Yeah. Man, I, I put them in, in so much stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, Mike, I've enjoyed our conversation, man. Uh, me too. Thank I've you. Enjoyed hearing Thank about, you for having me. About your stories, about all your recipes, and about your time with Frank and photography, and of course, your YouTube channel. Thanks for all the great ideas and for all the great food you've made over the years for us. We have enjoyed every thank meal you. at your house. It's been such a such a treat. And, and can I tell you, thank yeah. you for starting Journey Fellowship. Oh, man. Well, you know, it's just been uh, it's been the joy of our life. But, but thank you for, for yeah. your kind words. That's I appreciate a, that, that right there is big for me. God is so good, man. Yeah. We had, we've been having a great time together. And plus, you and Pam are on our media team. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys yeah. are in camera, and Pam is yeah. in the control room, and you guys help broadcast our online campus every Sunday. You're a key part of our, our media team. Thank you for all you do for Journey. Oh, guys, man, I love it. Yeah. You add so much value, you and Pam, to our team and to our church, and we just love you. Well, we're going to wrap it up. All right. So thanks for joining us today. I'm Doug McAllister from Journey Fellowship Church, and you've been watching stories I didn't tell last Sunday. My guest today has been Mike Sanders from The Sanders Kitchen. Check them out on YouTube. Subscribe, uh, like, and share because they have some great ideas and some holiday uh recipes coming up real soon so uh, we want to tell you how much we love you and if you live on the north shore or somewhere near slidell come visit us at journey fellowship church Uh, you can download the journey app go to your app store type in journey fellowship church in the search bar Uh, you can download the app it is compliments of journey it is stock full of resources to help you grow in your faith, as including driving directions, how to find us, how to get into a small group. You can watch past sermons, get connected in events, all that right from the app or check us out at journeyfellowshipchurch.com. And we would love to meet you in person. Come visit us, visit us this Sunday and go back and watch some of the uh, playlist here on stories I didn't tell last Sunday. So until next time, Doug McAllister here for Journey, and we love you, and we enjoyed telling stories I didn't get to tell last Sunday. <laughs>